Okay, let's get started. This week we started with an underdrawing, a sketch that is pretty uh, tight and detailed. The, this is a portrait of my daughter Sophie when she was around 12 months old and it's a nighttime painting so it's very dark around her. There is a very strong green light that comes from this stick that was a toy. The painting is called Night Life because you know this is the night life of mom. <laughs> I have actually used the medium uh, linseed oil this week because last week when I painted the cake I was very frustrated by the surface and the consistency of my paint so I decided I wanted a more uh, fluid, more liquid paint so I went with the linseed oil and uh, I was pretty happy with the feeling on the brush. And the other main thing I want to talk about this week is that this painting I wanted to paint in a more essential way. So I was talking with another great artist, Camilo Carreno, and his work is very essential. You can go and see it. And another artist that I actually really love and I follow on Instagram he is really amazing. And his name is Benjamin Bjorklund. And his paintings are very, very abstract, essential, but still very figurative and realist. And uh, it looks like he can paint in a very expressive way with few brush strokes. So Camilo Carreno told me, well, if you want to paint in a more essential way, to look for the shapes in a more simple way and describe the form in in a simple way then try this exercise and um, try to to paint do your painting with uh, less strokes so think about maximum 100 strokes for a painting and i i thought that was a wonderful idea especially for this painting because this painting is so sweet and this is a portrait that i tend usually to paint in a very realistic way with with a fine brush work and when i i just oppose many different uh, brushes of different colors to describe a very realistic uh, head so i thought this is the perfect exercise because it's exactly what I would not do usually. And so I decided this is an 8 by 10 a very small painting. And uh, I decided to, to just uh, take out all my biggest brushes and use just those at least to try to block in my painting and use as few strokes as possible. And I think that the oil, the extra oil that I used, it really helped me to, to achieve that because in one stroke I could cover more surface. This week again, we're dealing with a painting that is heavy in, uh, in the color white. And last week again, in the painting of the cake, I had the same, uh, the same challenge, the challenge of using a lot of white. So when you use a lot of white in a painting, the painting becomes very opaque and sometimes it can be tricky because it can turn very, everything can turn very cold and that's what happened last week I think and so this week I was very uh, focused on the, trying to balance my colors which is something new for me Basically, I am thinking about trying to balance all this green light with the warmness of some hearty tones that I decided to use for the shadows, especially the shadow on the forehead because it's under a hoodie. I wanted that to feel very warm and the contrast with the green light I think was really what kept my painting from uh, falling apart. I noticed that when I used this uh, extra oil, I was able to have um, a different style in my brush strokes. I like that. Uh, I like when, uh, when I can give the sense of, uh, of movement in my painting and somewhat similar to what I did in the metamorphosis painting where Ryan had a beam of shadows on his face 
and I've used the white on top of the darks to um, uh, to do some like sexy brush strokes so that it gave the sense of movement. Fortunately, uh, this week I got stung by a bee on my hand and it was so painful and it was all swollen up and it was my right hand, it was the ring finger and it was not fun to paint like that but I actually did it and I'm glad I did. Sometimes it's good to paint while you don't feel good because you really challenge yourself a little bit more and I think you can get some uh, breakthroughs doing that. As far as the head, I wanted to keep it, uh, the old painting, I wanted to keep it uh, like a, a sketch, like a quick sketch. So I didn't want to get too precious, I didn't want to add too many details and I and for me it was a different experience when I painted the eyes because I was able to block in some darker areas underneath and then to paint on top my eyes which is a completely different process uh, from what I usually do I usually just paint directly piece by piece like a puzzle and this time instead I built up my eyes on top of other paint which I think is a little bit more advanced because it can be stressful when you don't see your drawing anymore and you're painting, you know, blind in the dark. But honestly, uh, if I already have done that drawing, I, I know how to paint those eyes. I mean, I've already, I've already done the drawing. So it's not like once you don't see the drawing, you don't know how to redraw those those eyes of course you can of course I can but it can be stressful but the the difficult part for me was definitely the left hand left hand I had to repaint uh, two or three times before I was happy with it it's always difficult when you have a hand grabbing something and her hands are so puffy and so it's difficult to find the structure underneath and uh, while well, the right hand came out really easily, even if there is a, f a difficult perspective on the end, but sometimes it's just what it is. Sometimes something comes out right away, some other times something that maybe sometimes something that is even easier can be more difficult. The, when that happens, you know, just I just breathe and I just uh, do it over and over until I'm happy. And, uh, and with that hand, I decided that less was more, since this was actually the exercise that I was doing. I decided to just look at it as a basic uh, geometrical shape, like a sphere, and then uh, it, was, uh, it finally came out. But really, what does it mean, easy or difficult? Something easy to paint or draw is something that you understand and you know how to translate on a bidimensional surface right away to make it look three-dimensional. Something difficult is something that I don't fully understand and I haven't studied. It can come out randomly very good easily but oftentimes it doesn't so it's more like a it or miss hence i i understand a part of it because i've done a lot of uh, live figure drawings i know the structure of the hand and the basic shapes i've studied a little bit but I have not as much as as much experience drawing hands. That's why when I do include the hands in my portrait, sometimes it comes out right away because I understand how to um, simplify the shape and some others I just don't. There is a, a deep difference between copying an image, taking all the time you have in the world and just copying the shape that you want to reproduce. It's almost something that anybody can do. What is really difficult instead is to translate fast an image and the feeling you have of it and to put down a sketch and an impression of it. And in paint, I think that 
it's very important to know how to sketch something down easily because it shows that you fully understand what you're looking at and you have a way to translate it on the paper. Easy and difficult are generalization to explain all of this. So nothing is really difficult. Nothing is really easy. Everything is. And you whether understand it as an artist or not. And if you don't, it's just going to take more time to figure it out. Eventually, if you keep going, you will understand it better and better. And knowledge is not an on and off switch. Knowledge, visual knowledge, and is a, is a little speckle that you keep adding layers onto until it gets bigger and bigger. And sometimes this knowledge can be so big and heavy that it brings you down. But that is just for a while until you make that knowledge your own, you digest it and then it's part of you and you don't have fear of knowledge to carry around. It becomes part of you like the food that you ate and digested and now it's in your cells and that comes out naturally. This week was more of a quick sketch and it was great for me to develop a little bit more my brush stroke and more uh, confidence. Next week we're gonna go back uh, to painting gouache. So have a good Sunday. See you next week. Bye bye.